Welcome. In this video, we will go in depth on strike cuts. Strike cuts are a powerful tool that handlers can use to reset the stall count and gain yards at the same time. This video doesn't address the footwork or mechanics of how to execute a good strike, but rather analyzes the strategy of what a successful strike cut achieves for our offense and how to use it against common defensive schemes. In this video, we will learn what a strike cut is, what it does for our offense, how to read the defense to see if a strike cut is available, and I'll give you some tips for how to use a strike against man-to-man -man defenses. Let's take a look at a game situation. We're on the blue team on offense. We have the disc at the 10 yard line and we're trying to score in the left hand end zone, indicated by the blue arrow. We have three handlers set up in a line across the field. Chandler, our center handler, currently has the disc. Chandler's defender is applying a force home mark, pushing the disc to Chandler's right. We'll assume Chandler's right-handed, so from Chandler's perspective, the defense is forcing him to throw forehand. Mark is actively blocking throws into the red area. Here, blue one is our breakside handler, because he's set up on the break side of the defense. Because of the forced forehand, Chandler can't easily get blue one the disc. Blue one can't just cut straight up the field. He would still be on the break side, and the throw is still blocked. Blue one could cut behind Chandler into the dump area, but that would move our offense backwards. That's okay, but the strike cut can give him an opportunity to gain yards from this position. A strike cut is a diagonal cut up the field. Blue one is going to follow the blue arrow, cutting behind the mark at about 45 degrees. We want to aim the strike cut towards the blue ellipse area, about 10 yards up the field. It's important to keep this cut shallow. We want to throw to be short and quick. Also, downfield cutters will usually be set up about 15 yards away from the disc, and we want to stay far enough away that we don't clog up their lane or attract their defender. Chandler is going to time the throw so that he releases the disc just as the strike cut passes in front of him. The throw needs to be a forehand out to the right side so it isn't blocked by the mark. Remember that if the mark were forcing backhand, all of this would just be reversed. Notice that the strike cut comes from the break side and moves towards the open side. Because throws to the break side are blocked by the mark, our break side handler needs to initiate the strike cut to receive the disc. It wouldn't make sense for number three, our open side handler, to cut towards the break side because he's already in good position there on the open side. If mark were forcing backhand, then number three would be on the break side and should initiate the strike cut, but it's still heading from the break side and going to the open side. Let's see the strike cut in motion versus man defense. The strike cutter moves up and receives the pass. The other cutters move up the field to keep a straight line as the disc advances. Notice that the number one player now has the disc in the center. Chandler, the number two player, needs to cut back towards the space where the strike cut originated to balance out the line. In effect, the strike cutter and the center handler will switch places without drifting the disc too far towards the sideline. Some key tips to remember. For the cutter, the strike cut comes from the break side. Read the mark defender and recognize where you are in the field. If you're on the break side, you can set up for a strike. If you're already on the open side, just work to get open in your area. Aim for 45 degrees. We want to attack the area between the disc and the cutting set. Cutting too deep makes the throw longer and it will draw traffic from the intermediate defenders. Last, make a smooth, decisive move. If you dance, you'll alert the defense and give up the advantage of surprise. It's easy to get separation if the defender doesn't know the race has even started. Take the initiative and cut straight to the open side. For the thrower, you want to time the throw to release at the exact moment the cutter crosses into the open side. Make a quick, short throw. Don't float it high in the air and don't get greedy. If you wait too long to release the disc, the strike cutter will run out of room and a downfield defender will be in the area to make a block. Pay attention to how far the disc drifts towards the sideline when you hit the strike cutter. We want to keep the disc centered. If our throw hits too late or goes too far to the side, we will eventually get trapped on the sideline and this will crowd our number three player's cutting space. In the previous example, the disc started with the center handler and the strike cutter became our new center handler after the switch. Let's consider a strike when the disc is in a different position. If the disc is with the open side handler, blue 3, then the center handler can initiate a strike cut. 
The number three defender here is in great position to take away most of the field simply by applying a normal force. But we still have a narrow cutting lane up the sideline indicated by the blue rectangle. There is a small area near the sideline where our center handler can strike cut into. The mechanics of this cut are exactly the same as we discussed earlier. This is certainly an option, but unless we execute the strike cut perfectly, we will just be moving the disc closer and closer to the sideline. That will leave us trapped on the sideline, and we will have to make a difficult break throw in order to escape. Let's consider the opposite example. Now the disc is with blue 1. If the number 1 defender wants to force forehand, then the open side is pretty much the entire field. Only a small area is covered by that marked defender, shown by the red rectangle. In this situation, we have no handler on the break side of the disc, so there's no one in position to make a strike cut. That's okay, because we have tons of space to work with on the field. Be aware though, the defense knows they're in a bad position here. This is the type of situation where the defense may consider switching the force. Instead of trying to push us all the way to the right, but using forehand throws, the number one defender could unexpectedly apply a backhand force. Then, the red area would become open, but the rest of the field would be taken away. If the force were flipped, our center handler would be available to strike cut, but we would be stuck on the sideline again, just like in the previous diagram. That's all for today. Thanks for watching, and be sure to come back for more videos.